In this video lesson, we'll discuss the new industrial age and the expansion of American industry. Before the 1860s, the U.S. was mostly agricultural and mostly farmers. By the 1920s, it was the most industrialized nation on earth. How did it become the most industrialized nation on earth? This was due to several factors. A wealth of natural resources, things that could be taken from the land and used to create products. A government that supported business and a growing urban population, people that lived in cities, that provided cheap labor and markets for the new products. Early Americans had little use for oil until they wanted to use kerosene in lanterns. Edwin Drake was the first to successfully drill for oil. He did so near Titusville, Pennsylvania in 1859, starting an oil boom across the nation. His oil well can be seen here in this picture. Oil became even more important with the invention of the automobile. And you can see in the picture, this is a modern oil rig or oil well, which drills for oil in the ocean in this particular picture and then the original oil wells that Edwin Drake used to drill for oil. Along with oil, coal and iron are also plentiful across the United States. Iron is soft and tends to rust and break due to impurities. Removing carbon produces steel, which is really strong and won't rust. Henry Bessemer and William Kelly invented the Bessemer steel process around 1850, basically to produce steel to make it strong enough to use to create larger products like skyscrapers. The Bessemer process can be seen here in this picture. The air is blown in to the reactor and then it goes up into the molten tray. The slag and the impurities actually drop to the bottom and it purifies the iron. Um, air is injected into the molten iron which removes impurities like carbon. So iron minus impurities equals a very very strong steel. This is an illustration of what it looked like for workers making steel and using the Bessemer process. There were many new uses for steel as a result of the Bessemer process. Railroads were the biggest customers with thousands of miles of tracks. It made barbed wire and the steel plow possible as well. It also changed building techniques. With steel to support the weight of buildings, structures were able to rise taller and taller. The Brooklyn Bridge, completed in 1883, spanned 100, uh, 1,593 1, feet and was the tallest structure on Earth other than the pyramids in Egypt. The Brooklyn Bridge can be seen here in this picture. And you can see where the steel is actually used to be able to support the weight of the bridge. There were also other inventions that promoted change. Thomas Edison established the world's first research laboratory at Menlo Park, New Jersey in 1876. He invented and patented the light bulb there in 1880. Edison can be seen here in this picture with his incandescent light bulb here. Edison, along with George Westinghouse, made electricity safe to use in homes and businesses. Electricity allowed businesses to locate anywhere they wanted, not just near moving water or sources of coal. This is a picture of Edison's laboratory in Menlo Park. He was called the, the Wizard of Menlo Park because of the many inventions that came about in this laboratory. Inventions also changed lifestyles. A man named Christopher Scholes invented the typewriter in 1867, which gave way to change in the workplace. All of the documents had to be created by hand, written out, before the typewriter came along. When the typewriter was created, they could be typed and no longer written by hand. Next to the light bulb, the most important invention of this era was the telephone. Alexander Graham Bell invented it in 1876. Alexander Graham Bell is pictured here in this picture.
It was of particular importance to homes and offices and, along with the typewriter, allowed women to work in offices. In 1870, women made up only 5% of office workers. By 1910, they made up, of, made up 40% of office workers. The original telephone can be seen here in this picture. The device consisted of a coil of wire, a magnetic arm, and a taut membrane. Any sound caused the membrane, and hence the magnetic arm, to vibrate. The movement of the magnet induced a fluctuating electric current in the coil. This electric signal could be reconverted into sound by an identical apparatus at the other end of the circuit. This is a picture of Alexander Graham Bell using it for the first time and the message, Watson, come here, I want to see you. And we'll discuss the impact of these inventions and how they changed American life more in our lessons in class.